Hello, and welcome to another Wiser Tech Tip. This time, brought to you by our IT department. In today's tech tip, we will look at the Microsoft Distributed File System as a tool to help organize your Simulation Center files and save you time in accessing and distributing those files as needed. A Microsoft Distributed File System, or DFS, is a very powerful organizational tool. With a little planning and skill, it can allow you to access, modify, or move files on any computer on your network without having to carry the files on a portable drive or be in front of those computers. Here are some examples of how it works. If you have a scenario file that you want to load onto multiple computers in your center, typically you would use some type of portable device like a flash drive to carry the file to each computer. Or you would place the file in a central network location on a server and then go to each computer and copy it down. With a DFS, you can copy the file to each computer without ever having to leave your desk. Simply copy the file, open the DFS, open the correct shortcut, and paste the file. Here's another example. You have completed a scenario and want to debrief your participants in a debriefing room. Typically, you would need to copy the file to a portable device and carry it with you, or copy it to a server so it can be accessed from there. With a DFS in place, you can simply open the folder on system where it was recorded and play it back on your debriefing computer. Simply open the DFS, access the computer with the file on it, and play it back. Let's look at a different way a DFS can help you, which is perhaps the most powerful way. Sure, you can map all of the same folders on your computer without using a DFS, but there are two downsides to that. First, if you are in a big center, you would have a lot of drive mappings. Second, what if you aren't at your computer? Since a DFS can be mapped just like a normal network drive, it can also be set up to automatically map on any domain computer to which you log on. That means you have access to the same files and folders from any computer on your network, as long as you can log on to it. So how does a DFS differ from a network drive? Well, the typical network drive connects your computer to a single folder on a server. While that folder can contain many additional folders and hold tons of data, from your perspective, it is just a one-to-one -one connection. Imagine your computer being one of many computers on the rim of a wheel connected to the server at the wheel hub. The server can have many such connections, but for you, it is still just a one-to-one -one connection. With a DFS, that perspective is reversed and your computer becomes the wheel hub, and the server becomes one of many connections on the rim of the wheel. It allows you to connect that single server as well as any other computer or server on your domain. A DFS puts you at the center of your file structure. Now we'll take a quick look at how a DFS is set up and organizational things you can do to improve your experience. This is a good time to spell out some caveats of a DFS. First off, a DFS will only function on a Microsoft domain. Second, you will need to bring in your IT department to set up the DFS. And third, depending on how IT savvy you are and the rules in place on your network, IT may also be needed to maintain your DFS. If you will be the person managing your DFS, you will also need to be able to manage your target computers because you will need to create and permission shared folders on them. If you're not sure how to do this, talk with your IT department. In case you are not able to have your DFS auto map, you will need to map it. Your IT department will need to supply a path and a target shared folder. For this example, we will use a path of Wiser Sim 01 and a target folder of test share with a dollar sign. The dollar sign indicates that this is a hidden share which means it is not visible if a person were to browse the network. Right-click on Computer and select Map Network Drive. In the new window, select the drive letter you want to use. Now, enter the path and folder name. All paths of this type start out with double backslash. Make sure the Reconnect at Logon box is checked and hit the Finish button. Your DFS should open up in a few seconds. When you want to find it again later, simply open computer and scroll down to your DFS. 
So now let's add a shortcut to your DFS. Remember that you can only point to shared folders on your target computers, so make sure the shared folder is set up first. Also, browsing a large network can take quite a while. Make sure to write down your target computer and folder names. In this example, we will use Wiser Simprog and Simfiles. Open your DFS. Right click in any open spot and select New Shortcut. Type in your double backslash, the computer name, and the shared folder name and click Next. In this window, you type the friendly name for the shortcut, something that will make sense to you and others that will need to access it. In this case, SIM files. Once it is entered, click Finish. Now you can see and open your shortcut. Finally, let's look at some maintenance activities that may help you keep your DFS organized. First, what happens if a target computer dies or is switched out for some reason? Instead of deleting the shortcut and creating a new one, you can simply change the path. For this example, we will assume that Wiser Simprog was replaced by Wiser Simprog 2. Right click on the shortcut and click on Properties. On the Shortcut tab, Change the whole path or portion of the path that corresponds to the change in the computers, in this case, adding a 2 to the end of the computer name. Once done, click on OK. Another thing that may be useful is the use of DFS folders. A DFS folder is simply a container on your DFS that holds similar shortcuts. They should never contain data. In this example, you can see our DFS is pretty full and we have 11 different shortcuts for MetRoom computers. So we will create a Met Computer folder and place all of the shortcuts inside. Right-click in an open space on your DFS and select New Folder. Name your folder, Met Computers in this case, and click Next. Drag and drop your shortcuts into the new folder. It's as easy as that. If set up and used properly, a DFS can be a powerful organizational tool. It can make your computer, or any computer, the central hub of your simulation center file structure. Once set up, it is easy to use and modify to allow you to keep up with any changes in your simulation center computer hardware. A DFS can save you time, help keep you organized, and make it easier for your center staff to share work. The IT staff at Wiser hope you found this presentation interesting and helpful. Good luck in implementing your own DFS.